So we're actually going to fix something on this month's tech tip and that something is the electric window motor in the door of the pickup here. So this quit on me about a month or so ago. Actually I lie, it quit on me about two months ago, at which point I looked into replacing it, saw the cost of these things, uh, even scrapyards were wanting £70 for this. So I thought, screw it, as you do, I bodged it back together, threw it back in the door and hoped for the best. And it worked for about a month, until one cold and rainy day on the way back from Loughborough on the M1, where it packed in again, the door glass fell into the bottom of the door, leaving me exposed to the elements for the remainder of the journey. I got soaked, it was awful. So enough is enough, I'm gonna pull this old one out again, but this time I'm gonna fit this new one. Right, so the first thing you need to do is get the door card off the inside of the door. Now how you do this varies from car to car, but it's usually some combination of clips and screws that's holding it on there. Uh, but before I get to that, first off I'm going to remove the electrical switches here and the door handle because the card won't come off with those in place. So firstly the switches, these need levering up and out of the door rest. My weapon of choice for this is a small flathead screwdriver. Get that in there, pop them out. Now unplug them and put that to one side. Next up, door handle. So there's a little screw nestled away back here you need to undo. Remove that, then you can pull the handle out. Now you need to release the door rod which is usually held in place by a little plastic clip. Uh, these are pretty easy to break so gently push it off the door rod with a screwdriver. There we go. Oh, and there's this little piece of trim here, which I nearly forgot about. That needs to come off. That should just pull off. So with those items out of the way, we can now focus on getting the door card off. Uh, so with this vehicle, it's held on with four screws. Two in the door rest here, which you need to pop off these little plastic covers to get access to. And then there's one on the hinge side of the door down here. And then there's one on the bottom of the door here. Pop them off. Now undo these four screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Now you've removed the screws, the only thing holding this door card to the inside of the door are the little trim clips. Now these are basically a push fit when the door card is installed, so they need to be popped apart. You can get a special tool for this, but you'll probably manage without, to be honest. So I'll start at this bottom corner uh, and pop this loose by hand. There you go. And then work your way around. If you encounter a stubborn one, uh, which you may well do, you can always try levering it apart with a screwdriver. Remember to lever as close to the clip as possible and it should just pop loose. Like that. And lastly there's this guy here, which uh, I always forget about. So that's pretty much it, the door card should just lift up and out of the door now. So when you get to this point, you might find there's a plastic film covering the entire area. Uh, now mine long since went, but if you find this, you can always peel it gently away from the adhesive and then stick it back when you're done or cut a window in it with a Stanley knife and then stick it back together after. Uh, or you can just rip it off if you like the violent approach. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so inside the door here is the mechanism that controls the raising and lowering of your window glass. Uh, most commonly referred to as the window regulator. Now, in order to replace the motor, this whole lot has to be removed from the inside of the door. 
So before I go any further, I'm going to stick the window into the up position with a piece of tape. Now that will allow me to remove my temporary fix to hold the window up. A length of broom handle, it served me well. With the broom handle gone, my next job is to disconnect the window glass from the regulator. Uh, and this is held on by two screws, one at either side, and I can gain access to these via the holes in the door skin. I can actually get a socket on these, so that's what I'm going to do. Alright, with the glass released, I'm going to lift it all the way up and tape it back into place. And then it can stay out of the way for the remainder of this job. Then we need to disconnect the motor, which can be easily done by this plug here. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure that the regulator can be removed from the door by undoing these five nuts or bolts. One, two, three, four, five. Ten mil. Right, I've left this one till last so I can reach in and take the weight of the regulator while I undo this last nut here. So it might take a bit of angling to get it out, but you should be able to. Okay. So with the regulator removed, you can sort of see how it works. It's got a kind of scissor action going on and it's controlled by the motor at the top here. Now the first thing I'm eager to see is if my 50 pound eBay special motor is actually gonna fit. You know what, it actually looks pretty good. So removing this old one should be pretty easy. Just undo these three eight millimeter bolts. All right, so last time this broke, uh, this, oh, you can see it's popping off again already, but this thing had completely popped off and all the gear set inside had just fallen inside the door. I had to pick it all out and stick it back in there. It obviously hasn't lasted that long. So the good news is it hasn't destroyed these teeth here because uh, if that happens, you're looking at a new regulator assembly. Uh, unless I have seen people weld them up and then grind the notches back in them, that's proper hackery, but if that works for you, go for it. So I'm going to clean this up. Join me back here in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I've cleaned everything up. I've greased the teeth here and all the sliding mechanisms on the regulator. So now I'm ready to fit the new motor. Now, when you fit this, make sure that the teeth on the motor engage with the teeth here, because once it's fitted, I don't think you're going to be able to adjust this. Uh, and you want it in its most compact position to be able to get it back into the door. To be honest with you, I am not quite sure where that is, but I've noticed there's a little symbol here and I'm hoping that that means fit the motor in that position. We will see. So it turns out my eBay special has failed me a little bit. Um, I've got these two bolts in. I cannot get that third one in. I need to drill out this hole a little bit. Uh, I don't have my drill or bits with me, so I can't do it now. So I'm just gonna have to go with these two for now. You know what's gonna happen here, don't you? It's gonna stay like that forever. <laughs> but no, what I should do when I get back, drill it out and then get the bolt in. That's as good as it's gonna get. Okay, so the new motor's fitted. This lot is ready to go back into the door. Make sure you've got it angled the right way around before you put it in there. Something like that. Go. 
okay, we'll get that nut on first. They're all nipped up. That's now securely back in the door. Don't forget to plug the motor back in. So it turns out that my assumption about that little mark on the teeth on the regulator was absolutely right because now that it's back in the door, the next thing I need to do is fit the glass and it's already perfectly aligned with the holes in the, in the door skin. So that's what that mark was there for. Now, if yours are not aligned with the holes, the only thing you can do is plug your electric switches back in and cycle the window up and down that way. But there's no need to do that here because it's already in position. So I'm going to release my bit of tape and drop the window gently back into the door. Now I can install the two screws. Right, door card back on. To get these trim clips back on, it's pretty simple. Just bash it. Next up, the four screws and that little clip there. So lastly, and probably most awkward, is the uh, door handle to go back. A little tip, wedge something underneath the door handle to keep it up. Uh, that way you'll have a little bit more access to the end of the rod. Should make it a little easier. Okay, rod clips back on. Now I'm going to remove that screwdriver I've wedged in the door handle. And finally then, put your little screw back in behind the handle here. Done. Sorted. So thanks as always guys for watching. Uh, if you liked the video or found it helpful, please do click that like button below. Uh, and if you wanna see more of the same, I do try and get these videos out every month. So subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks a lot. I'll see you for the next video.